Hello, and welcome to another edition of Inventor's Quick Tips. In this episode, we will take a look at the similarities between the patent application process and the Apollo 13 mission. Apollo 13, as you may know, was a lunar mission that got into some trouble when the fuel tanks malfunctioned and it never did reach the moon. But miraculously, all the astronauts made it back to Earth safely. This is one of my favorite clips from the 1995 film where the NASA guys have to come up with a procedure to rig something using the parts they have on hand. Main asphyxia. What about the scrubbers on the command module? They take square cartridges. And the ones on the limb are round. Well, I suggest you gentlemen invent a way to put a square peg in a round hole. Rapidly. Okay, people, listen up. People upstairs handed us this one, and we gotta come through. We gotta find a way to make this fit into the hole for this, using nothing but that. Let's get it organized. Okay, okay, let's build a filter. And, a fun fact, the banner photo on the main YouTube page, that is from a computer module for a Saturn V rocket, which was on display at the U.S. Space and Rocket Center in Huntsville, Alabama. Anyway, now take a look at the similarities between a patent application and this Apollo mission. So once that rocket left Earth, it had all the supplies it was going to have. It was not a space station where you could send up more supplies later like we have today with the International Space Station. Everything it had was there when it took off. In an analogous situation, a patent application, once filed, contains all the information it is going to have. We can't add new matter to a patent application after it is filed. In the patent application, the office action containing rejections is analogous to the incident on Apollo 13. It is very common to receive an office action with rejections, and we often need to edit the claims to distinguish from the references that the patent office used to issue the rejection. But we are limited to what was described in the application when it was filed. We can't edit the claims to claim things that weren't adequately described in the original filing of the patent application. So suppose I had a patent application with a claim to a gizmo having two gears. It really doesn't matter what the gizmo is for this discussion. Then, several months after filing, I get an office action. My claims are rejected, a fairly common occurrence, because the patent office found another similar gizmo that had two gears. So then I say, fine, I'll claim three gears. That's different than what the patent office found. Can I make this change? The answer depends. Was there a mention of a three-gear design when I filed the application originally in sufficient detail to explain how it works? If it was explained sufficiently, then yes, I can make this change. If it was never mentioned, then this claim amendment probably won't fly. If it was casually mentioned, then it still may not suffice. Meaning, if in the original application I wrote a single sentence that said, well, you can have three gears, four gears, or even more gears, but didn't show those arrangements in a drawing or explain it any further as to how the gears are interconnected, then the examiner probably won't accept this amendment. So the time to think of this is before you file the application. Make sure you have enough details and variations to have something to work with when it comes time for the office actions and the claim amendments. When there was a problem on the Apollo 13 spacecraft, the things they had at their disposal to solve it were limited to what was on board. There was no way to send a supply ship to give them more tools. They had to use what was right there on the table, and that's all they could use. There is one important difference between the Apollo spacecraft and a patent application. Spacecraft typically have a strict payload limit. We can't put too many heavy things in there, or it will never get off the ground. In contrast, patent applications usually don't have a strict content limit. So you want to make sure that you put in all you think you might need and more in order to overcome any rejections you might get down the road. So how do we do that? Put another way, 
what do we pack into our patent application to try to overcome the problems we might face during our mission to turn our patent application into an issued patent. First and foremost, we need to explain how it works. What does the invention do and why does it do it? So we have the how, what, and why, but are they all equally important? My take on it looks like this. In terms of importance, I'd say the effort should be 60% on covering the how and then 20% covering the what and the why. The how is important because patents cover how something works and that is key. So how does the invention work? What things do we need? What is the theory of operation? So let's use an example of a jet airplane. I've encountered hundreds of cases where I have to write an office action for an application that I didn't write originally. And it's like the uh, situation of Apollo 13. I got a problem, namely some rejections, and the only thing I can use to get around the rejections is what is in that application when it was filed. So using just for an example the idea of a patent application for a jet airplane, I'd see an application that talks a lot about how the jet engine makes the plane go faster and how it can be used in pairs or sets of three or four and all these other things a jet plane can do but with very little detail on how the jet engine actually works and those might be the details I need to get around the rejections so that is the reason that the how is 60 percent because if we go into good detail on how it works by definition we will cover the details of the structure and theory of operation that we may rely on to overcome rejections from the patent office. We can imagine lots of advantages and benefits for a jet airplane over propeller planes, but in general, it is always good to talk about advantages and any new uses or applications that your invention can provide. This can be useful as secondary arguments, especially for obviousness rejections. And unlike a rocket ship, we can add a lot of detail to a patent application without penalty. So the bottom line is be sure you thoroughly cover how the invention works, what it does, theory of operation, why it does it, and you will increase the chances of coming away with an issued patent at the end of the process. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If so, please like, share, and subscribe. And thanks again for watching.